Welcome to my step-by-step -step transparent watercolor tutorial, Farmland. The photograph on the right was a reference for this painting. It's a group of farm buildings not too far from where I live. I decided to take a, a very traditional approach to this painting using local color. I did a sketch directly on my watercolor paper with a 2B pencil. I drew the larger shapes, the building structures, and some of the architectural features, but it's not an overly detailed drawing. I've begun to apply a wash behind the building structures here. That is a mixture of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, with a little bit of raw sienna in it. And I'm uh, putting down a a light middle value and then I'm going to come in with some clear water and I'm going to gradate that wash out a little bit and I'm putting this wash down to give the indication of uh, trees behind the building structures. Even though the leaves have fallen off the trees when you have a grouping of trees like this the uh, assemblage of all the branches and limbs still present themselves almost as one kind of a hazy shape. Throughout this painting as I work I'll uh, try to incorporate both warm and cool neutrals. You can see by looking at the photograph in the top right corner that the building structures themselves have have a lot of neutral tones in them. I'm going to put a similar wash here on the left side of my composition to indicate this um, distant tree line in the background. So here again I'm using the combinations of ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and raw sienna here. These structures have some shrubbery and bushes uh, in and around the building structure, so I'm laying down a wash again to give the suggestion of that um, kind of hazy volume that's created by uh, a grouping of branches and twigs. So it's kind of on the corner of a few of these structures. As I do this, I put down a brush that's loaded with some pigment. It's uh, it still has quite a bit of water in it, and then I come back with water in the brush and soften the edge. I'm going to put uh, a little bit of a darker tone back here on the left side of this uh, building, and on the kind of covering the silo. And I'm going to put a little bit more color into it, a little uh, raw sienna. So I have a warm and cool mixture working together there. And I'm going to take some, some water and soften that up. There's a road that goes past this uh, set of uh, buildings and on the other side is um, an area that has a stretch of sticks and twigs and weeds kind of scrub growing and uh, uh, a little closer to the foreground and then it transitions into uh, a grassy area. So I'm taking the same, uh, same approach to this area that I've done on the corners of the house and in the background I'm painting this light wash to give the suggestion of the, the grouping of twigs and branches. To this point I really haven't changed my colors. There's a field behind this grouping of structures 
and it's a, uh, a golden color. So I'm taking a wash of yellow ochre and giving the indication of uh, these fields. In the area close to the structure, there's some golden grassy areas that, that transitions to a green tone. So I'm going to apply uh, some glazes, put down some washes in this area that carry that gold tone and a little bit of a green tone that uh, I'm achieving by working in some sap green. So right now I have uh, sap green and yellow ochre that I'm using in this wash. And I'm going to take this tone all the way across the page and uh, it's going to make up the majority of the, the foreground. Now I'm going to give the indication of that same field on the other side because that moves behind the buildings and comes out on either side. You can see I'm trying to give the indication of planted rows by the, the direction of the brush marks that I'm laying down. Here I'm uh, working with the ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and raw sienna and I'm painting the shadowed side of this uh, farm silo. The, the construction of the silo gives the impression that there are square panels that go around the outer surface of this. So I'm trying to give that indication with the brush marks that I'm making. Painting this second silo, and I'm going to paint it more as a uh, an even tone, and even though it has some warm and cool working in it, it's the same value, but it's completely in shadow behind this other silo. And I'm going to paint the tops of the roofs for these buildings. There's two uh, green roofs. And to, to paint this roof, I'm using a mixture of cerulean blue and viridian. Here I'm applying the wash to the second building. And I'm just trying to get a, an even wash, gradated wash coming down that uh, roof line. I'm going to paint the uh, shadowed side of this building and uh, as I paint this I'm intentionally making the, uh, the sides of the building that are on this plane shadowed and the uh, left hand side of the building and the silo I'm given the indication that there's some light coming in there and it's it's more of a contrast than it appears in the photo so on this side of the building in the shadow I'm still using a mixture of ultramarine blue uh, raw sienna and um, a little bit of burnt sienna but not too much so I'm trying to keep the feeling of the warm and the cool colors. So warm light bouncing around and cool shaded areas. And this is where I'm uh, letting the, the paint mixtures actually mix on the paper some. So I have one continual wash, but I have a variety of colors coming, coming and going. Um, the warm and the cool colors. I don't have a whole palette of colors, but I go from the alternate back from the warm to the cool within the one wash. This is where it's very important that you have a good handle on um, how to apply a wash and lead a bead of water down your page. Uh, that's why it's important to work 
at a uh, an angle when doing this or you can't get this uh, kind of a result so I'm leading the bead of water actually down around the page and uh, it follows the path of least resistance so wherever it's dry that paint just holds and keeps a nice clean edge but you can see that I've alternated the blue tone and the raw sienna tone and a neutral tone as I've brought this wash down the side of this building. I could have just used one color but it wouldn't be uh, near as interesting. Here I'm going to apply a similar wash to the uh, other structure here. So I'm using to apply this wash, I'm using a, uh, a half inch flat brush. It's a silver black velvet uh, series brush. It's a nice uh, set of brushes and a lot of my wash brushes are uh, out of the series. In this area here I'm using a uh, middle value tone, but it's uh, warmer than the other washes that I've put on some of the sides of these structures. It's uh, a lot of raw sienna with a little bit of ultramarine blue in it. Here I'm going to take this value uh, across to the right of this, yeah, even though these are different shapes and pieces of different buildings, I'm letting this one wash just run together and form one larger shape because it's, it's kind of all in the shadows. Here I've taken a mixture that has some burnt sienna with a little bit of quinacridone gold in it and put in a little bit of a, a darker and oranger tone on the field back here. I'm taking that same mixture and putting some of it uh, in the area that's just in front of this building. As I apply this wash, I'm trying to contour the slope of this piece of land that's right in front of this building. It's a bit of a, a, a hilly area, and I'm just trying to uh, contour it with my brush stroke to give the indication that there's a slope there. I'm going to come in here with a mixture of uh, raw sienna and sap green and I'm going to uh, put this wash here in this foreground to give me a little bit of a darker value and a richer tone. I'm also going to take some of this mixture and put it in this other area closer to the buildings again to darken that value and provide a richer uh, tone there on my paper and I'm going to also bring in uh, a mixture that's got some uh, burnt sienna in it that's a little stronger a little bit more pigmentation than what I've used so far and a darker value I want to strengthen the suggestion of this uh, area that it's got a grouping of uh, weeds and sticks and straw growing up. So I'm going to put this darker value down. And then I'm going to take a fine mist spray 
and I'm going to soften that uh, going up and diffuse that color up. Now, unfortunately, it's uh, sometimes it'll diffuse up like that and it, it, it won't come back, but I had too steep of an angle. So the best way to do this is probably going to be to rotate this. So I'm going to turn it upside down. And then I'm going to take that fine mist spray and diffuse that color down. So I'm going to put a little bit more pigment on the paper, which is now wet on wet. And that mixture is a mixture of royal blue, burnt sienna, and it's a it's heavy heavy pigmentation, so it's pretty rich. So here I'm spraying it to diffuse that color, and that's going to give a suggestion of that that, that kind of uh, hazy shape that you get when you have an assemblage of twigs and branches and and things like straw growing up. I've turned this back over and I'm starting to apply a darker value to the rest of this uh, small building structure. There's two little uh, shed-like structures here that I haven't uh, painted on the uh, shadowed side yet. So I've got a mixture here of uh, royal blue with burnt sienna and here I'm inserting the photograph again the reference photograph so you can take a look at how this is progressing now I'm going to put a very light wash over the sky this is a mixture of cobalt blue with a little bit of a neutral tone that I had been mixing from the burnt sienna an ultramarine blue just a touch of that neutral tone in the cobalt blue and I want this just to be a a fairly smooth even wash I'm not looking to make clouds but I'm in essence trying to tint the paper a little so that some of the uh, highlights on these uh, building structures stand out a bit more I'm intentionally keeping the sky very simple. I don't want a bunch of clouds. And uh, I'm just leading this wash down the page. It's, this is at an angle, so it, it'll flow nicely. And I'm using a one inch wash brush, flat wash brush. And you can see as I bring this tone right to the side of that silo, how the white highlight on that starts to stand out more now that I've tinted the paper. Now I'm going to begin to work with some very dark values here, putting in some detail um, on the buildings and really throughout the composition. So I have this quill brush I like to use. It holds a lot of paint and it comes to a very fine point. So you can see here I'm starting to paint uh, some of these window shapes and some of them are solid dark and some are break, I'll break them up a little bit. Some have a touch of a white highlight on them. But there's a number of uh, dark detailed brush marks that I'm going to put across my composition. This brushwork is very repetitive and it takes a while to do so. In order to conserve some time here, I'm going to speed this segment up as I work through this brushwork, and then I'll resume normal speed.
And that brings us back to normal speed. You can see that the dark valued brushwork I've done has started to provide some detail and bring some more dimension to the composition. Here I'm finishing up this final brushwork and what I'm going to do next is the area that I had put a wash behind the structures uh, to represent the, uh, the mass of the, the tree branches. I'm going to add some, uh, some actual trunks and branches to. So I'm, I want, want a clean edge on the, the structures. I want to maintain that. So I'm going to take some clear tape. It's clear packing tape that I use to mask sometimes. I'm going to put it right on that edge to protect that clean edge. And I just put it down lightly. I don't press hard. And I'm putting it right along the edge of the building structure. So I can make my marks to represent the trees and the limbs and not have any worry about it getting on the, the uh, building. I can keep those edges nice and clean. So I've got it on the two, two main edges and then there's a little bit of an area I need to protect. Now I'm going to take a uh, small uh, rigger brush or liner brush and I'm going to start to make marks to represent the trunks of the trees. There's uh, one big tree shape behind this building in this area. So I'm going to make that suggestion here and you can see now I can because I have that tape there I can bring my brush stroke all the way down and it, it gives me uh, the safety of uh, a clean edge there in case I were I couldn't stop my brush and it's hard to stop a brush sometimes on an edge like that if you're bringing it down so that tape gives me a nice clean edge and I'm just bringing these limbs right into the trunks Here I'm just making uh, a number of medium valued brush strokes here to give the suggestion of limbs. I'm not trying to copy any particular limbs out of the photograph. I have a tree there and it, and it uh, has a lot of branches that overlap and, and go a lot of different directions and I'm just trying to capture that and give, give my interpretation of that tree. And sometimes what I like to do is when I get some of these branches in there is take uh, my fine mist spray and hit it with it to soften some of those edges a little bit and let them run together. So as I make these marks, um, I'm going to take the, the bottle now, the spray, and I'm going to just soften that up a little bit and it, it gives another layer of a light glaze. It's fairly cool overall so I'm going to take a little a, a warm tone and, and just touch it in that uh, tree area right now which is, is wet so it just diffuses that uh, the brush mark I put down and it softens it up but it brings some some warm highlights to that tree shape. I've thoroughly dried my paper I'm going to remove the tape and you can see I don't really have much problem with it doing anything to the paper. People ask me that quite a, quite often when they see me use this if I have uh, difficulty with it hurting the paper and I really don't but I'd recommend just testing out your particular tape and paper just to make sure that they work together. Now I'm going to take the same approach here in the somewhat in the foreground where I gave uh, the suggestion there earlier in my process that there's some some scrub and some brush that's that's growing on the side of the road and now I'm just taking the, the liner brush and uh, 
making some of these kind of grassy stick like marks that give the suggestion of this uh, kind of area of uh, briar and scrub that's growing here along the road. So I've done a lot of work with a liner brush in this area and I'm taking just a small sable brush and and uh, putting uh, a darker valued wash here to, to make it feel a little bit more grounded. I want to darken the value on the shadow side of this silo structure. So I've got this small sable brush and it's a mixture of burnt sienna and royal blue. Gives me a, a, a kind of a gray tone. Taking a, a mid dark value tone here and uh, starting to put some detail on this building. All my detail work so far has been on all the other structures except for the under, underside of this building. And um, it has, it's a solid side, but it has some pattern to it in the wood panels that are used. There's a, some sliding doors here that are closed, but they have some diagonal uh, boards on these doors. So I'm going to start to give the indication of the sections of the doors and the glide that they move on. Now here I'm making some diagonal marks to give the, uh, the suggestion here of these wooden panels that are at an angle here on these doors. And uh, I'm making marks that just Again, they suggest it, but I'm not trying to render render every board. You can see I've changed the angle on my brush marks. That's the way these boards are. There's two doors here, and they each have two sets of panels that are uh, diagonal, uh, going in opposite directions. And there's a pattern also in the uh, the side of the the building structure. The, the panel so I'm given the, the indication now that there's uh, vertical panels that are making up this building uh, structure that are covering the sides of this building once I get these marks down I'm going to spray them lightly just to soften them up and let things run together a little bit I don't want it to be so hard edged. Um, I like to, to have a little bit of softness and some blending of uh, values going together. Now I'm going to take a cooler tone and uh, a middle value and I'm going to put it underneath the edge of the roof just to um, Give the indication that a shadow is being cast. I'm doing the same thing on this other structure, giving the indication of a cast shadow. This other building also has a pattern of boards, um, vertical boards, so I'm taking this half inch flat brush and I'm laying it on its side and I'm dragging it down in a vertical motion just to give the suggestion of these vertical boards. And there's places I put the brush down and lift up so it's not a continued line and I'm just touching the tip of the brush as I drag it but I'm also dragging part of the side which leaves 
the, a pattern of this value to give the suggestion of these vertical boards. Here I'm going to come back over to the other structure and do some of the same brush work on the side of this building. Taking a dark value again with this uh, quill brush to put some dark value, uh, some more dark value details in uh, the composition. Here I'm making just the indication of some dark marks along uh, the side of this building to complement some of those brush strokes that I just made dragging the with by dragging the flat brush down. Now on the side of the building here, I'm going to do similar brushwork to what I did behind the buildings to give the shape of the tree. And I'm not taping the edge here because I'm not bringing this all straight down into the to the edge of the building. So I'm not worried about it. I'm just bringing it down into this uh, kind of grassy area, an area with some shrubs but it's the same uh, approach. Okay, a little overlap there with that one branch going over the top of the roof. I'm going to make uh, a lot of these kind of wispy brush marks here, just a little bit lighter value in some areas, but it gives the, uh, the indication of branches, twigs, and then I'm going to do some more here right at the edge of this building to, to give the indication of a, a shrub or a bush growing there on the ground. I want to highlight some of the uh, stuck structural qualities of the silo. So I'm just taking my liner brush with a, a somewhat dark value um, and I'm just giving just a slight indication of some of the structural features of this uh, silo. And I'm just adding a few detailed brush marks here. There's some metal iron or bars hanging off of the silo. Then just give it just the slightest indication of a power line. I'm not going to drag it across my painting, but just give a slight indication. A couple other, just a few brush marks, small brush marks. I've decided I want this distant tree line to be a little bit more pronounced, a little darker value. So I've got a uh, burnt sienna ultramarine blue mixture that I'm using here. So a bluer tone towards the bottom and a warmer tone towards the top. And I'm going to take some clear water and soften that going upwards. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here. Here I apply the bluer tone and then bring the burnt sienna tone on top of it and then some clear water.
I've decided I want this to be a, a darker value underneath the uh, the roof line here, this cast shadow. You uh, lose track sometimes when you apply a wash after it's dried. It, it dries much lighter and uh, I've decided that's kind of the case here on the shadow and the same with the, the shadow on the other building. So I'm going in with a uh, ultramarine blue ultramarine blue tone that has just a little burnt sand in it so it's still fairly cool and I'm just strengthening that shadow a little bit I'm going to take some of the same uh, cool shadow color and put it uh, on the uh, shadowed side of the silo. I'm trying to do it in a manner where the brush strokes match the uh, kind of the structural qualities of that silo. And then just soften it a little bit with a spray. I've also decided that I want to. Uh, make this just a little bit of a darker tone here behind the building to help that stand the building stand out a little bit more in the highlights that's the good thing about staying light you can always go darker it's hard to go the other way And that's my painting Farmland with the photo reference on the right. I hope you enjoyed this. Don't forget to check out Rick Sorwitz Watercolor, friends and subscribers on Facebook. If you have questions about my materials, you can always go to the studio page in my website, rsorwitzart.com. If you have questions, you can email me at contactrsorwitzart at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.